What's up? My name is Drackle, and this is my 12-hour in-game clock using an iterating piston memory register. And I thought I'd give you guys a quick rambling tour of how this works. It's not quite finished. I haven't hooked up a display because I honestly haven't figured out um, which kind of display I'd prefer. I don't know if I want to use pistons or uh, redstone torches. Uh, leave a comment if you have a preference. Now, how does this thing work? Well, this is the counter system. Basically, we have a loop of repeaters that's 12 minutes in game, and then we have a minecart that iterates, and there are five stations, and once the minecart loops around, that's when the hour is up, and hits this detector rail, which sends a pulse to the register and says, okay, advance by one hour. So in other words, it goes from, say, one o'clock to two o'clock. Now, let's calibrate this bad boy and see how it works. I have to do this exactly right, so we're going to set the time to day using single player commands, and I'm going to press the button, just like that, and that'll start it up. Now it's going to loop around through the repeaters, and once it gets to the end, it's going to trigger the minecart, and the minecart will advance by one. Okay, so I came up with this idea after I saw Etho's video for the trivia game uh, thing. He used a very similar system of iterating pistons, and I realized I could extend it and modify it a little bit to uh, create a memory register. And this holds 156 bits of information. Uh, I only currently use 144, because it's only 12 hours in a day, um, because this uh, design is inherently uneven, has an odd number of uh, rows. Now, this piston's at the last point, so when it hits this detector rail, I'm going to freeze time, and we're going to see what time it is. Come on. All right, perfect. One zero zero. It can't get better than that. So now, as you heard in the background, it iterated the array of pistons, and now it has advanced by one hour. And that's how this thing works. Let's take a look at the register itself. It's thirteen rows um, of twelve blocks each, meaning one hundred fifty-six bits total. I think, if my math is right. Now, it's made up of glass and a solid block. In this case, I use wool. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it's solid. And you can see it's in a pattern. And basically, what it is, you can see here, um, the first block was on where this repeater is, the second block is this repeater, the third block is this repeater, and so on and so forth until it reaches the end here. That'll be the 12th block. And as you can see, all that does, it's like a punch card reader. It iterates and the block is uh, one further to the left every time. Now there's an uneven amount of rows and I, I don't think there's any way to solve that. If someone has figured out how to fix that with this sort of design, let me know. But the way I solved it was simply by uh, connecting a, uh, a large NOR gate to the output. And what happens um, when the 13th row comes to uh, the front here and uh, goes into the piston and into the uh, repeaters all the, the all of the 13th row is blank it's all glass all glass blocks so that triggers the nor gate and turns this torch on and what happens when this torch goes on it goes into a pulse limiter here that I just hooked up which sends the pulse back here to the start and tells it to iterate again so it in fact double iterates. Um, the array moves twice when it reaches the 13th uh, row, which sets it back to the uh, the starting point. So that, that's how I solved that. And I apologize for being kind of vague. I will release a, a longer video on how this whole thing works um, when I get it done. But I just wanted to uh, get this one out. Now, let's see. What else? Okay, so basically how this works is here we have the iterating array of uh, glass blocks and wool. And we have repeaters here powered by torches. And these repeaters are sending power through these blocks. But notice it's only powered when we have a solid block instead of the, instead of the glass blocks. So just like that, good example. Because uh, redstone power cannot pass through glass. So you can essentially set up a, uh, a punch card memory system using this. The only blocks which uh, the repeaters will shoot power through are the solid ones. 
So you could fill these rows with whatever you want. So it's uh, basically, it's kind of like uh, ROM, sort of read-only memory. It, it's difficult to uh, program it. You actually have to manually put the blocks in. I think there's a way to solve that. I just haven't got around to uh, messing with that yet. It'll be somewhat complicated. But I'll work on that. And now we have, uh, let's see, repeaters just sending power to this block. And we have um, these torches. And these torches are only just to move the power up into these blocks for the display. And this will be the output for the display, which will be over there. And here we have that NOR gate that I talked about. So what's actually happening here is we have, like I said, 13 rows of 12 blocks each. And the reason there are 13 is because you need three air gaps, one, two, three, and one solid for this to work properly. If you don't have that many air gaps, uh, the pistons won't extend in certain cases and it becomes a real problem. Now what happens is these pistons will fire first and it'll push all these blocks to the side. Then these pistons will fire and push the blocks up. Then these pistons will fire, push the blocks this way. Good example. And then these pistons will push them down, thus completing the chain. So it becomes a, an infinite loop of blocks pushing blocks. Now the wiring is very simple. Uh, just putting redstone across the top of the pistons on, uh, in each case. Um, they all have different uh, delays in order to make them fire at different times of course so I just use extra repeaters nothing really special the wiring itself is very simple um, apart from the the I guess the pulse limiter um, everything is is fairly easy to do just the concept is difficult and uh, getting everything to work at the correct time and in sync is quite difficult so I think that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to show you with this. Um, maybe we should take a look at the first version of this uh, memory register that I came up with. Let me uh, get over there. Now this was the first one that I built after watching uh, Etho's video. I came up with the idea of using it as a register. I'm sure it's been done before, but uh, it's sort of uh, a light bulb went off kind of thing. And that was uh, possible by widening the middle of this and putting in the redstone torches and the repeaters on this side to send the power through the actual blocks that the pistons push. And here we have the output and I have uh, separated these the best I could. And they get sent over here into a uh, basically a memory buffer using these torches below the outputs which lets me send them basically uh, in pulses instead of them just being constantly on and off. And uh, the idea with this was connected to a circuit. Um, I was going to make a uh, sort of a bank vault pin machine to get into a room um, that's still <laughs> under construction. Um, I'm going to have to use XNOR gates to uh, look up the pin and then have a second memory register for the user number. But yeah, that's uh, my first attempt at this. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it. It's really not too complex. Um, the hard part's going to be connecting the display and separating all the wires. I think that's going to be entirely the, the biggest part, certainly, of this whole thing. Uh, the display is going to have to be huge just to accommodate all the, uh, the different uh, wires because there's 12 outputs, basically. Now, uh, you could probably, you could definitely make a 24-hour clock if you wanted to. Um, with this one, I'm just going to have a T flip-flop to toggle AM, PM. And we can also, I probably will add minute counters as well. Right now, it's an, an interval of 12 in-game minutes. Each one of these stations is 12 minutes, so I can just connect. Um, I could put a detector rail on each of the top of the uh, sandstone blocks and use that as a uh, minute counter. I could even hook up an adder and get more defined than that. I could even have a, a minute or a second counter if I wanted to. But I don't think that's necessary. Now, how accurate is this thing? Well, you're about to see. We're about to witness the uh, end of day here when that minecart moves. It should move any second. Okay, and as you can see, 
that torch is lighting up and it's just getting dark so I'm pretty pleased with how this came out uh, I've tested it so far I left the game on for 24 hours total and it was still exactly the correct time so I'm, I'm happy with that that's pretty much as accurate as you need to be considering that whenever you uh, unload the chunk the uh, timing pulse gets stuck in the circuit I think that's common to all redstone clocks I haven't seen any way to fix that if you guys have a fix for that let me know but uh, yeah so that's my 12 hour clock using uh, Ethos piston memory uh, I hope you like it and uh, I'll release a full video hopefully in the weeks to come after I've hooked up the display device this has been Dracul um, check out my other tutorials uh, my let's play series if you haven't and if you like this and you want more well, subscribe, so I have a lot more cool shit coming your way. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.